Normally when I see a power fantasy isekai with an extremely overpowered Kirito knockoff insecure otaku self-insert main character, a plethora of haughty harem waifus ranging from hot-headed hot-blooded battle maidens to cutesy genius science lollies overly charmed by and totally dedicated to the main character, cheap interchangeable one-dimensional villains who are easily overwhelmed by the sheer awesomeness of the MC and are one hit obliterated while exclaiming just how awesome and OP the MC is, and a plot which is as predictable as fairy tale and has slightly more narrative depth than an NTR doujin, I stay as far away from it as talent and creativity are from Reiki Kawahara. But that is not the case for Eminence in the Shadow. Oh, and also that's the cue for all the edgy 12 year olds to hit the dislike button, leave a hate comment and click away from this video. Hello and welcome back my filthy weebs, it's your friendly neighborhood degenerate and today we're gonna talk about an anime that bamboozled my expectations and totally surpassed them in the first couple of episodes. I mean, granted, my expectations weren't actually high to begin with, but still, that's saying something for a generic isekai. At first I thought Eminence in the Shadow was just like any run-of-the-mill power fantasy harem with a chuny protagonist because this is how the show presents itself in the first episode, but boy was I surprised when I was met with a genuinely funny, well-paced, and all-around the most fun anime I've seen of the genre in a long time. Which doesn't take itself too seriously with the plot, meanwhile the characters are taking themselves way too seriously with everything, and manages to do the subvert your expectations thing just the right way in the first few episodes. I would have said take note Ryan Johnson, but then I remembered I don't watch Hollywood movies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the story begins in the real world with our protagonist Sid Kagino in high school because obviously. He's obsessed with becoming the power within shadows, a person who exerts enormous power from, you guessed it, the shadows. In order to realize this obsession, the guy trains constantly and has mastered every weapon, martial arts, and fighting style known to man. In an unexpected turn of events, his classmate is kidnapped by the most generic, violent, and rapey kidnappers. He saves her by being equally violent and rapey with them. Wait, no. J uh, j just, just violent. However, after being injured in the incident, he comes to realize that there is a limit to how strong he can get. And there will always be things that could defeat him in an instant. Like a, like a nuke. No, he literally says a nuke. My man wants to tank a nuke. But the next thing we know, truck has already made its move and isekai yet another poor soul. Armed with the knowledge of his previous life and picking up magic skills in the new one, Sid builds himself a double life. By day, he is the most generic, normal, everyday kid of a noble with mediocre looks and abilities who is easily overshadowed by his talented older sister. By night, he is Shadow, the slime suit wearing vigilante who likes to take on criminals and hack them to pieces. One night, while fighting a group of smugglers, he find a... well, this thing. Who turns out to be a cute blonde elf. Wanting to fulfill his age-old dream and recruit the girl to his cause, Sid feeds her a cock... <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that, feeds her a cock and bull story, saying that she was cursed by the cult of Diabolos, an underground covert organization that wants to resurrect the ancient demon Diabolos. Impressed by his noble one-man war against the cult, she decides to dedicate her life to his cause, becoming his second in command Alpha. Command of what, you say? Well, you see, Alpha goes on to recruit a few more girls, just a few, you know, around 600, and thus Shadow Garden is born, a secret organization waging war from the shadows as a last line of defense against the evil schemes of the cult. But obviously, that is just play pretend on part of Sid. Or is it? As it turns out, the cult actually exists, and all the members of the Shadow Garden are aware of its existence, all except for the mastermind behind everything, Sid. See how that turned the whole dynamic on its, on, on its, on its head. It's, it's, it's funny. It's, 
Yeah, and thus begin the most over the top and hilarious series of events which can only be described as falling upward. And Sid's ability to bullshit his way out of everything through sheer dumb luck will put even Ainz to shame. This anime is one of the freshest and hottest this season and for good reason. Hey, that kind of rhyme. And one of those reasons, perhaps the most important one, is the characters. Sid is hands down the most entertaining isekai protagonist we've had in a long time and believe it or not his everyday life of him pretending to be background character a is a lot more interesting than his shenanigans as shadow and it is downright hilarious to see him put so much effort into looking ordinary being deliberately average at studies proposing to the most popular girl in hopes of getting rejected and losing in a sword fighting tournament in the most humiliating way possible I mean this guy is so dedicated to being a background character that he jumps in front front of an attacker. Why? Because the first victim of any attack should be a background character. He takes a fatal blow, dampens the impact with magic, stops his heart, keeps a steady flow of blood going towards his brain using very complicated magic that could very easily lead to his death, while inside a barrier that can nullify magic only so he can play the role of the background character who dies first in an attack. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call method acting. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Leto eat your heart out. Oh, and also, as it turns out, it wasn't Trakkoon who isekai'd him. He isekai'd himself to get magic powers. What the f As Shadow, he is either the self-aware wisecrack who likes to point out several tropes and cliches as they unfold in a dramatic situation, or this chuny super badass who can rival the Giga Chad himself, Penis Voldemort. That's what I said. And the anime seamlessly switches between the two, and I honestly have no idea how it does that with a straight face. Either way, he never fails to crack me up whenever he says shit like this. そこだ。やべ、ずれた。この先には彼がいるもの。さすがシャドウ様。迷った。まさに。パーフェクトなモブだ。僕が金になびく男に見えるとでも。見えるわ。その通りだ。僕のモブ直感が面しなりをの進行
protagonist with a singular mindset is generally shown to be pretty smart. Or is it the anime's way of subverting the dense protagonist trope? Or perhaps he already does know about the cult and has already set things in motion that would reveal themselves in the future and the whole narrative would make sense. Nah, I think I'm giving it too much credit for being a lot smarter than it actually is. All in all, Eminence in the Shadow is one of the most entertaining anime this season. And if it wasn't for Chainsaw Man, it would have gotten a lot more attention. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't dare compare it to Chainsaw Man. It's neither as charming and wacky nor as smart and revolutionary. But it doesn't try to be anything like that. It completely embraces what it is and runs with it to give you an entertaining ride. And if if you're looking for an anime that is pure unadulterated fun, then this is it and it's worth your time. Oh, so you made it to the end of the video. You think you're some hot shit, huh? Well, why don't you hit that like button then and subscribe. Oh, and share this video with another asshole. And wait for my next video. I'll see you in that one. Now get out of here. Shoo.